they're the, they're the examples of how people so, perceive Tasmania. So John wants that pedestrian TV article so he can add it into his yeah. appraisal packs. <laughs> <laughs> It's safe as houses, baby. Safe as <laughs> you can buy here. You don't have to worry. There's yeah, actually, no, no pen. We'll, we'll start with like these photos of Mad Max. This yeah. is what's happening elsewhere. But Tassie, safe. I love it, but here's Furiosa. Going once, going twice, sold. You're listening to The Property Pod. It's a golden week. It's a golden time. It's a golden time to be alive. I'm your host, Aaron Horn, and you're listening to the Olympic version of The Property Pod, a real estate podcast that loves the Olympics so much and never has the same intro ever again. <laughs> <laughs> We're always mixing it up. That's why you're keeping it on the edge all the time. How's that, Pat? You happy with that? That was a silver medal performance. <laughs> silver medal. You thought last week's was better. Last week's was on the fly. I did lie in bed thinking, how am I going to mix it up this week? I'm like, we got good responses. We had Tom from uh, Sydney. He reached out and said, gold, gold, gold. You so know. he enjoyed it. So I thought, I'll just throw it out to him again. I love it. Gold, gold, gold. How are we travelling? How's things? Good. Good. Mm. I think you, the market's once again just kicked into another gear. It seems mm. super active this week. It does, yeah. We were kind of having a sales meeting uh, Monday morning and everything, everyone was saying, I've got this coming along, I've got this coming along. You've had some really good response just this last week to like three brand new listings that are just going gangbusters, John. Yeah, it's been a couple of really late nights of negotiation. Um, one of the buyers um, had did the thing where they set a time frame, so my offer is available for, you know, for X, like, this will be available. So we said, well, okay, if you want to set this time frame, this is what we'll do. Um, and he was surprised when he hadn't heard from me by 6.30 at night. And he goes, well, I would never, you know, never expect that the owner would be working this late. And it's like, well, obviously you haven't worked with our team before because, you know, the latest negotiated till 1am in the morning if we have to. Um, For sure. But it's just uh, obviously people are doing whatever they can to st- try and secure a property, you know, either prior to going the weekend or, you know, effectively trying to make ways in which they can strengthen their position. Um, and if people haven't heard of it before, sometimes people will say, look, here's an offer. It's you know valid for 48 hours, which is perfectly fine. Um, so then we just work with those people at that time and if we can uh, get a deal together, then we do. So they're trying to do that to remove competition. competition. That's yeah. right, yeah. So rather than it going to Saturday's open home and having you know 10 people fighting for the place, yeah. they're trying yeah. to put in a strong offer and knock everyone out of the park. Yeah, ex- that. And it's tr- and obviously they're trying to add that little bit of – to get a little bit – bit back in control, which, you know, buyers certainly don't have at the moment because it's been such a strong sales market. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm ever in the negotiation process, but I can always just imagine, you know, somebody's throwing out this massive number and you're being like, take it to them straight away. And you're like, oh no, I've already discussed with them that they want to go to the open home. It's like, no, no, my number is very important. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I said to, um, I said to the, the buyers, because... <clears throat> <clears throat> Oh, you said to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a tactic I that, use. No, that's, that's all I do when people call up. Can I make an offer? <laughs> uh, sorry? You sound like the Taz Devil. Yeah. <laughs> and then I come bounding over. <laughs> oh, we'll stop. Uh, but, We're but very we, professional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when actually at, at, at the end when I was chatting with my client, he said, oh, John, geez, you keep your cards close to your chest. And I thought, well, I find when when we're in negotiation, I think it's probably why I'm tired because it's been a really intense few days is because when there's an active negotiation, like we're just – my mind is just on the whole time and it wasn't until we finally signed off and everything at about 7.30 last night that I was like – Okay, this is a great result. I'm not sure if we can talk mm. about it on the pod, like the actual specifics of the place and stuff, but mm. – using broad terms, it was quite a unique opportunity, a rare one that comes up. So there was lots of... um, Yeah, it was a development opportunity. And with that, though, it was a mixed because um, given its location, um, we saw it it could work two ways, whether or not you'd have this really beautiful home. Like, not a... Sorry, the house was... um, bit rough yep. but it was you know it was a you know a lot of land in you know in the northern suburbs in central so someone might look at it to go you know what i've got this really awesome parcel of land that i could do a heap with in you know this in this uh, or we could effectively then because it's in a residential zoning develop it now mm. in this case the the strongest buyer was a developer which we always anticipated um however it, it still did have that o- other option as well and Look, the reality is, is that that much land in this section it just doesn't. They just there's very f- few and far between because these are these old farmhouses that have been around, you know, hundred plus years. And everything's kind of popped up around it. Uh, there's modern buildings all around it, and then you just kind of like, oh, how's this really how bizarre parcel? Is still there? It's just there, ha- hardly been touched since like the 1920s or something like that. And, yeah, and yep. it's just like, oh, that's only three streets away from main road. 
area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice broad terms. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I was pretty happy with that. <laughs> Main road uh, area. <laughs> I thought that was good. Yeah, yeah. But well, the good thing is now this is a timeless story as well. So. Uh, it's just like that moment in time where your head, just the light bulb went off. He's oh. like, oh, I can't say that. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it is, it, it was an interesting one because most of the time, you know, nine times out of ten, the properties that will move through will always go over the course of the week. Even if it was, you know, I got taught this when we we're doing auction where I always go to auction because you never know. Yep. Um, and... But every now and again, there will be an opportunity that comes up where it's we can encourage the owners to say, you know what, it is actually worth us um, strongly considering this, and this is what you know they chose to do because normally, normally we'll always um, go over the course of the weekend, close off interest at five pm on the Monday night, so people have got time for their solicitors to look over the contract, etc., and then make a decision that evening. But yeah, we moved ahead early this time around. And just like just putting it out there, this is just an approach that um, you take with your listing sort of thing. I'm not. There's not a right or wrong way. I'm just. No. I know from getting your marketing materials ready that if it's Thursday, I've still got a few days to get everything together because Monday's going to be launch day. We're going to run it through this period of time. Whereas yep. other people are happy to kind of in this modern age of information straight away, mm, mm. we'll just launch it Let's on your Thursday. Hopefully it's gone by Friday afternoon and then you don't have to do the open home on Saturday. Yeah, that's right. Um, but like, like – Speaking in broad terms. <laughs> well, it was, it, was, it was like a, we, um, young Aaron and I, we signed up uh, a listing last night and like we said to the clients, look, you know, we're not afraid to work, you know, and because it, it obviously if that means at the end of the day, you know, we recognise that we want the best result for the owner. If that means we have to do another five days worth of work and 25 private inspections, we'll do it. If it really means that little bit of a difference at the end. Um, and obviously that even though you could sell it within the first five minutes, I mean, that would certainly be in our best interest because it means we can stop working. But, um, you know, we've just, we just it proves time and time again that by investing that extra time produces a better result. And you love it. Yeah. You love the grind. <laughs> you love yeah. getting in there and making your phone calls. And I could see that you were – well, you've got this – Another one in Lindisfarne, another one in Moona. You've got another one coming up at Dancing Point. Like you've got lots that's just about to come through. Yeah, you can kind of see the energy bubbling up in John, and just being like, "I'm going to talk to lots of people. Yeah, uh, well, the, I'm going to have the best time doing it." The, the, the phone keeps running out of battery like by four o'clock in the afternoon at the moment. And uh, here's a tip: you might need a new one, John. Yeah, I know. This uh, the Samsung's been running a bit low. <laughs> I met a, met a guy in Vegas that you know was like one of the promoters, and in his jacket he had one of those charger things for his phone, like yeah. the portable ones and I was like oh man how long does that take to run it oh like two hours I've got like four phones I'm running and he had five oh, different really? little of those charging things all over him I was like you must be on fire mate like, so much energy just coming off you how the heck do you even make that work mate he was just making deals left right and centre just hitting Far all out. those phones that's next level yeah. I'll get you into this club man I'll take you to this club you can come <laughs> well uh, one thing that I we do like about working a little bit harder is it it still provides the buyers an opportunity you know, and I think in that instance, in these tough markets where they're finding it exceptionally hard, we're trying to give that opportunity to as many people as we can within the limited time frame. And you know, and that sometimes that you know that have giving them an experience, even if they miss out, um, I think it's a really important part that us agents can play. Um, and it's you know, I think it's it's worthwhile spending the extra hours. And as you said, yeah, we love it, <laughs> mate. It, it's beaming off you at the moment. You know, looking at just the result that you've had there, John, it sort of um, brings me back to an article that came out this week from Core Logic in regards oh. to how the Hobart marketplace was going. Did you see that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, that was that was insane because because it, it gave a perspective across the country as well, didn't it? Yeah. So the key takeaway from it is that Hobart over the last twelve months has just exploded in price value again. Mm. I think they had it worked out at $130,000 extra of growth, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, it's like nearly 30% or 400 bucks a day or something. <laughs> Which is just ridiculous when you yeah. think about Can it. Can you explain that to me? What do you mean by 400 bucks a day? Like the property is gaining $400 worth of value yeah. every day. Yeah. So, so the idea being is that from the median increasing to I think now just close to 631, um, you know, Hobart, like Southern Tasmania or Hobart, yep. the way they value capital cities. Um, so that time 12 months ago is that if you owned a property, you're basically um, – it was increasing by $400 a day mm. in total value. Pat's just showed me his phone. He's done a little quick math for me. So 400 times 365 days. days. was $146,000 worth that- of growth in a 12-month period. So, you know, that's just crazy to think that <laughs> properties mm. can rise that fast. Mm. So <laughs> – 
well, and that's and that's the point. I guess it's, the it's been so, it's been a, in in incredibly difficult for. I mean, exciting on one side, but difficult on the other. Like we, um, one of the things that the Yard go goes on to say because you know a lot, I'm sure you get it too, Pat. They'll go, "What do you think's going to do?" And I always say, "Well, look, that's for opinion for people much smarter than me." Speaking um, of spe- people smarter than us, there was a Simon Presley article I read the other day, basically saying like everyone doom and gloom. But I'm back, baby. Yeah. Like I called it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Yes, Simon." I think we. I think we need to get him because it, well, it, he's got it, plenty of time look, at the moment. He's probably in lockdown. So, well, Simon, if you're listening, we'll get you on next week. <laughs> I suppose in the spirit of the Olympics, we could bring him on for a victory lap. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> we could get him a gold medal. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. With a little Brisbane Lions. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll work on that this <laughs> week. <laughs> well, and then uh, with that, then of course they're, they're always asking the economists where do they think it's going. But it does sit there to say is that um, it may. It, like demand may te- or growth may temper off in the idea that it's good, like as the values increase too much, it really just completely um, puts first home buyers out of the market. Which is the sad part about it. Absolutely. But, yeah. you know, there are still, I think, even with the incredible price growth of the Hobart area, there are still suburbs, I think, that are still within reach of some first home buyers. Yeah, and good value too. Yeah, you know? so look, some yeah. that are really showcasing some strength at the moment are Sorrel, Brighton, and Claremont at the moment. So they yeah. seem to be the ones that are really. Ticking along quite nicely as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Have you sort of got an opinion on those areas, John? What you? Well, uh, Claremont was my first unit. That's where I bought my first place. You know, um, and you think about as a little, you know, um, small little city uh, in the Gnorky municipality. Um, it's great. You know, it's um, you've got the Cabris factory. There is sports grounds up there. I think you've got you know a lot of really basic services. <laughs> there is sports grounds up there. I think. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> we've got the footy oval up. Well, I never used the tennis courts, even when I lived across the road from it. <laughs> there's the golf club. Yeah. There's the golf there's club. Bowls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Six footy ovals, a yeah. frisbee course. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah, get, 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 come on, come on. Uh, I think they're there. Well, it, look, it's one of those ones where locals always had a, a bad rap against it, but you know, it's just gone. You know, I think it's actually, as you mentioned, all three of those suburbs. I think it's one of those things that, like, gentrification's kind of come through. And what used to be, I, I've mentioned on the podcast before, I was never allowed to go to parties at New Norfolk. It was just a blanket rule. Yeah, there's a party in year eight or nine. Is that you, Norfolk? I wasn't going. Right. Just based on the um, the old idea of people from that area. Yep. I was there last Thursday with my son. We went and had this cake at the Cake Lady on the main road. I had the best time in New Norfolk. I thought, like, what I was missing out. Yeah. Everyone was walking around. It was beautiful. You got Look, three breweries there. You got a whiskey distillery there. It was You've crazy. Got lots of cool stuff up there now. Mm. Yeah. So I was down in the valley and I was just like, oh, I really like what's going on down here. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at those three suburbs, Claremont, I grew up in Claremont. Yeah. There were some streets you shouldn't go down, but most of the time you were pretty safe. Mm. Brighton, I remember, oh, we talked about the sports oval last year and we're going out there. It was freezing and mm. there was some. Ruffians. I, I think Sorrell and Brighton have also grown because of the development aspect out there. Both yeah. those two areas are the, one of the few areas that have actually got space to grow. Yeah, yeah. Like for, for sure. new developments, new subdivisions, where everywhere else is sort of capped out unless you find a little golden opportunity like John sold earlier this week. But, mm. you know, that's why I think those two suburbs have become more appealing because, you know, a lot of younger people love the idea of a new home and mm. to be able to build a new home that's affordable, you got to go to places like that. Well, it's because the land's flat. So, and you know, too you, expensive in town. Yeah, 100%. Like for a block of land in the northern suburbs these days, you're up around 380,000, 400,000. Mm. And that's just for a, a that's block of land. That's the parcel of land before mm. you even get to yeah, so start you your build. You know, mm. that's just getting ridiculous with how expensive it is to buy land in Tasmania. So, yeah. you know, that's where these outer suburbs have become very popular and why they've had the growth that they've had over the time. Yeah, and I suppose. Anyone who's obviously lived in central Sydney and New South Wales would understand, is it, and Melbourne, the peripheral suburbs are where, you know, those growth opportunities and um, affordability is. In Hobart, I guess for us who've lived here our whole lives, it, we've always just had it so good. So it's everything's always been so close. So the idea being that you have to move out 30 minutes was just inconceivable. Um, what I see, though, is um, I think everybody's long on Tasmania now. You know, it's that... Um, it's, it's, it's past its point where everyone knows it, everyone wants a part of it, and it's got all the stuff to back it up, the produce, the, um, you know, the 
I hope well, I'd say the forecast job opportunities, even if they may not be available today. I think as it con- continuously becomes harder and harder to get access to, or they want want more of it, so will you know entrepreneurs bring opportunity with them as well. John, I pivoted our show away from one of the articles I was going to um, bring up today, but I'm pivoting us back. Oh, sorry. No, no, this is perfect. What In other words, he, he wasn't interested. <laughs> no, no, no. What you've just said leads perfectly into yeah. the other article that I was um, I was going to bring up. So you've always talked about your doomsday prepper friend from America <laughs> who yeah. um, wanted to move to Tasmania. Bought the block. No, bought the block of Blushy Creek. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yep. All right. So an article came out. There was a sustainability report mm. which um, was published in like a scientific paper. Like I went to look at this paper in the sustainability thing and it was one of those ones where you can't even read three lines because it's referenced everywhere and all the scientific terms. But mm. turns out Tassie is one of the top five places to survive a full global collapse. Oh, you're kidding me. So hello, Hobart. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Yeah. Hey, that guy was forward thinking. He, he was ahead of his time. He was onto it. And he, yeah, he just so, didn't buy enough land. No, apparently not. Yeah. So of the top five, um, it is the UK, Iceland, Ireland, the southern island of New Zealand and yep. us. Wow. So one of the key features was that it was a controllable border. Mm-hmm. Um, there was that you had to be able to produce your own produce. Um, you were close to another major population, but um, you weren't the key part of the population. Right. Um, that there was actually a really cool bit in. I've got to find it here. Mm. It said, in fact, the research determined that New Zealand and let's say Tassie yeah. would be the best place to form a node of persisting complexity. And then it put in um, regular terms: read a society similar to what we have now. So without turning full Mad Max or going crazy, oh, we like have the most. It would still sustain- be able to. Um, we could sustain a life similar to what we have now without it being. Two out there. No way. Imagine Jesus, the rest of Australia, everyone's on Mad Max yeah, trucks yeah. going across the <laughs> desert <laughs> fighting for every last speck of water and we're just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It is somewhat kind of like what's happening at the moment with COVID. Like we're still, they're still saying like, oh, if it, if it gets here, like in a really bad thing, we'll have to do snap lockdowns. But yeah. we haven't really had to deal with it uh-huh. way too much. Yeah. So we have been lucky to live in our non-Mad Max style <gasps> Jesus, lifestyle. Jesus, well, but it was funny because it came through. Yeah. It actually here's another bit I really liked. It said a period which they have called the Great Acceleration. So rather than like the Great Depression or all these other areas, mm. areas we're in the Great Acceleration based on like population growth and um, how much um, energy we're required to live. Right. All of this stuff's growing and growing and growing. But here in Tassie, we're all good. We're all good. Ireland, oh, yeah. UK, Iceland, yeah, yeah. all all of our listeners in Iceland, you guys are doing all right as well. Yeah. There you go. So I just wanted to pivot back. Sorry, we were talking about that. interesting yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess that's to me then when people ask what do you think is going to happen, well, they're the, they're the examples of how people so, perceive Tassie. So John wants that pedestrian TV article so he can add it into his yeah. appraisal packs. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe as houses, baby. Safe as <laughs> you can buy here. You don't have to worry. There's yeah, actually, no, no pen. We'll, we'll start with like these photos of Mad Max. This yeah. is what's happening elsewhere. But Tassie, same thing. I love the He's furious. Yeah, so yeah. she's standing there. It's like, oh, Charlie Theron lives here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, this, this is if you stay in Melbourne – <laughs> this is this is this is an inevitability, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Five <laughs> years tops. Yep. Yeah. So Sorrel, Clam, yeah. Brighton. Brighton. They're not wastelands. No, nah, no, nah, they're uh, they're a haven. They're a haven. Unreal. Well, that's oh, a bit. That's that is good. real because I mean, think about it. There was um, the, no one would ever speak about the way they do about Tasmania now. Fifteen years ago, when we started, you yeah. know, it just it's just it's it's just changed. And no. it, and and I think the locals are passionate about the state too. And most the, most definitely. Just in other news this week, um, the. Taste of Tasmania Festival was gone. Looks like it's coming back in the form of Taste of Summer. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so uh, first time it'll be a ticketed event ever, but, yeah, a group have got together um, of um, people and put enough funding to get it going. Get it going. The Tas government will put in a little bit of money, but, yeah, looks like it will be back over New Year's just with a new name and a new little facelift. So yeah, cool. Well, that, that's, that's good for the state. Well, that's good for Dad too because he always has the biggest birthday of the year. Because so, it's the 30th of December and because he'll always just say, oh, look, meet, you know, meet me down with the rest of the people. I'm, I'm throwing my birthday bash down at the wharf. Um, so I'll be there. And if you want to catch up with me, um, you know you know where to find me. I really like that. <laughs> yeah. Mark Stewart used to call my dad the mayor of the taste because he'd just go and stand in a spot and everyone would come up to him and just say, Steve, how are you? Oh, right, man, was mate. <laughs> he was good at that. He was good at the taste. Like so. he nearly it. taped off his own little square. <laughs> really? He stood there and charged $5 <laughs> to come say hello. People thought it was Santa Take just on his holidays <laughs> after. Uh, he's had a big wedding. <laughs> delivering presents, <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, "Oh, Santa's here. He's having a having a beer." Like, oh no, it's Steve Horn. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I get that bloody gift? <laughs> 
All right. We're going to wrap up, I think. Yeah. I think we will wrap up there. Just to finish off um, the show today, Dry July finished last week and just mm. a massive shout-out to everybody that got involved um, across the month of July. The 414 Clearheads team, which Martin Evans uh, put together, um, has raised over $3,500 for, awesome. for cancer research. So That's awesome. a cause that is very close to a lot of us um, here at the Property Pod. Yeah. Um, something, yeah, that it's really, really impressive that I think we had a humble beginning of let's try and raise a grant. Let's try and raise yeah. $1,000 and see what it does. Yeah. Um, yeah, everyone got behind it. It was amazing that everyone came and supported. Mm. Um, mm. Your dad alone, Chris McGregor, raised over 1000 just off his own bat. So yeah, I think because yeah, nobody believed he could go 30 yeah, days yeah, exactly. <laughs> And I heard him talking to Nino yesterday. He was saying how much he enjoyed. So we're putting a blog post together about how it all went. Yeah. He was saying he enjoyed himself and he felt clearer. He lost a few kilos. So shout out there to Chris. <laughs> He's living proof that Breast it does make of his a life. difference. Yeah, and yeah. shout out to Nino as well. Do you know that Nino joined in and did Dry July oh, as well? You informed me yesterday. Oh, did he really? Yeah, so That's he was an unofficial member. He didn't um, – didn't let us know until after it was done, but he said, oh, yeah, I, I did it too. And was oh, like, mate, good oh, on you, Nina. A nice yeah, yeah. little way of, of having him uh, as a team member. Just, yeah. Oh, I so love that. shout out to that. Yeah, yeah. And so thank thing. you to everybody that did get involved in Dry yeah. July. And contributed too. Yeah. Mm. Very much appreciated um, and, yeah, to a really, really, really good cause. Yeah, for sure. Fantastic. Awesome. All right, guys, that is the Property Pod. I think we've got a massive month ahead. I think mm, as spring's mm. about to um, kick into gear, everything seems to ramp up. Yeah. I mm. think things are about to really ramp up. I can't believe our houses are worth four hundred dollars more every day. I know. I'm just gonna go tell Sarah. I'm just like, honey, <laughs> we, lady, we're making bank. <laughs> <laughs> Get on to eBay. Go yeah. for it, honey. Buy some stuff. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. That is a golden episode of the Golden Show, nice the right. Property Pod. We'll see you next week. <laughs> see you guys. Who wrote? You've been listening to the Property Pod, recorded and edited by 414 Media House in conjunction with 414 Property Co. This podcast is general information only and the thoughts and views expressed is the opinion of our panel and listeners should always seek their news, their own investigation into any topic we discuss to ensure they fully understand their own situation. It does not constitute and should not be relied on as purchasing, selling, financial or investment advice or recommendations expressed or implied and it should not be used as an invitation to take up any agent or investment services. No investment decision or activity should be undertaken on the basis of the